Hello, this is Scott with Brazil Controls. Now that we've got a station to commission our Jace with, we've gotten our Jace from our distributor, we've taken it out of the box, we've powered it up, uh, I've even changed the IP address in it. However, we're going to talk to our Jace for the first time, and we're going to go commission this Jace with the station that I've made earlier. You can also commission with any copy of a station that you may have in your user home. So here, today, I'm using a developer version of Niagara, Niagara 4.15. And in this case, I need to establish a platform connection. So what I'm going to do is hit File, hover over Open, and left-click Open Platform. This is where you would punch in the factory default IP address at 192.168.1.140. I've already changed that IP address, so I'm going to punch in its current IP. Make sure you're using the TLS connection. By default, the non-TLS connection is disabled. Click OK, and this is where we're going to have to set up a, well, before we can set up a passphrase and replace our factory default credentials, we have to accept this certificate. So let's accept that certificate, log in with the factory defaults, that's admin admin. And because this is the first time we're talking to this platform, it wants us to create a system passphrase to protect sensitive information and then replace the factory default credentials with something else. From here, I'll just click Next, and I'll punch in a passphrase. I'll click Next. This is where we're going to put in our new platform credentials. I'm a very, very creative systems integrator, as you can tell by my new platform user. I'll give that platform user a password and then click Next. There's not much to do here other than click Finish. And after we click Finish, we'll be logged into the, to the platform of the JACE. From here, I now have that IP address of the JACE in my nav tree. I can expand that IP address, and I see the platform here. I like to right-click the platform, hover over the commissioning wizard, and left-click. From here, we'll get that commissioning wizard that'll give us the walkthrough steps in commissioning our JACE. And what that really means is just sending all the files that the JACE needs to run a station. From here, I definitely want to make sure I have install a station for my local computer or it's not going to have that application to run. I'm also going to sync with my local date and time. I don't need to change my TCP IP network settings. And for the heck of it, I'll add a redundant or a second platform account. So in case I fat finger my first, I have another one. From here, I'll click Next. And in this case, I am going to update my license because I'm running a new version of Niagara at 4.15. And I'll click Next. In the JACE 9000, we don't have to select the UX and WB runtime profiles. For the JACE 8000, you will, and I recommend that you do. I'll click Next. And this is where we select a station to send to our JACE. In this case, I'm going to send Scott's Cool Station. This is an opportunity to rename it. If I didn't like that name, I could change it. And these two checkboxes are start after install, which I think is self-explanatory. But auto start is every time that Jace gets power cycled, we want to automatically start that station. And we do. So I'll leave it checked and I'll click next. This next part is what I call cherry picking. And it's adding any modules that you want to send to the Jace or software packages that may have some features that we want on top of what this station already requires. Here's our cherry picking window. And it's a little bigger because it's just easier to see. If I wanted to make sure that my Jace had, say, the BACnet module so I could add a BACnet network later, I'm going to scroll down past the modules that are checked and to make sure that I have that BACnet-RT checked. It'll also automatically check its dependencies, and that's perfectly fine. When you're done cherry picking your modules here, you can click next. I'm done cherry picking at this point. I'll click next. 
there's nothing for us to do here. We can just acknowledge that it's going to send a bunch of distribution files to the JS. I'll click next. And this is where I have that opportunity to put in another set of platform credentials. I'll click OK. Click Next. And this is just a summary of what we're trying to download. And these are all the files that are going to get sent to the JS. I'll click Finish. There it is. I'll click close window. The JS is going to reboot. If it takes 10, 15, heck, even 20 minutes, don't be alarmed. That is perfectly normal. Sometimes it can take that long. We'll come back after a little bit, and we'll see that our station is running. All right, it's been a little while since we commissioned our JS. I'm going to try to log into my platform here. Double click my platform. Log in with the platform credentials I said earlier. And now I'm logged in. If I wanted to check if I could log into my station, I'm going to double click my application director. And if the status says running, we can log in to this JSIS station. Because the IP address of this JSIS is already in my nav tree, the quickest way to open up a station connection would be to right click that IP address and then left click open station. Now we made this station connection or made this station earlier in the last video. So I'm going to use those credentials that I set up for that admin user to log in. Accept the station certificate. I'm going to log in with admin. And the password I set up for admin when I made the station using a new station user. And I'm in. I'm in logged into Scott's cool station.